a third reason to study functional programming. Actually, this is more of a non-reason. Functional languages are sometimes used in industry. I don't want to give you the wrong message here. It's not that you're going to learn a functional language in this class and then suddenly go out and get a job on that basis. Not at all. People get hired for all sorts of reasons, and the particular languages you know from your studies here might or not might not be one of them. There are places that functional languages are used throughout the real world. I've kind of cheated by putting Java 8 up here at the top. Java 8 has added some functional features, and so it's a little bit of a way to see it in the real world. And maybe, in fact, that is the right way to see it. That over time, small features from functional languages are making it into imperative languages, and thereby getting used all over the place. The lambdas, the anonymous functions that you learned in Java, that's an example. But as we go down towards the bottom of this list, we get to more and more truly functional languages, and they are used at companies throughout the world. OCaml, the language we're going to learn, has been used by many companies. You can take a look at the OCaml.org website for a list of some of these. Facebook, for example, created a language called Reason that's based on, in, in fact, compiles to OCaml. Reason is for front-end web development, and it solves some of the messy issues with JavaScript's lack of compile time typing. Jane Street, as another example, is a quantitative trading firm based in New York City, and it runs everything it can on OCaml. The head of technology there, Dr. Jaron Minsky, uh, not coincidentally, is actually a Cornell PhD grad. But at the end of the day, the reason we study functional programming here in 3110, the reason that the Cornell Computer Science Department, one of the top 10 in the US, requires its majors to learn functional programming, it's for your education. It's because it makes you a well-educated computer scientist. It's not, per se, about getting you your next internship. Albert Einstein said, education is what remains after one has forgotten everything one learned in school. Actually, I'm not 100% sure Einstein said that. He's, he's kind of like the Abraham Lincoln of quotes about education, but somebody said it anyway. And I think it's appropriate here. There's going to come a time when you've forgotten lots of things that you learned in school. Folks, I, I took microbiology once. I, I don't remember anything about it. I took linear algebra once. Uh, don't ask me about eigenvectors now. You're going to forget some things you learned, including this class. I'm not kidding myself. But I hope that what remains is still useful to you. I hope that what remains is the way that I and other faculty here have trained you to think about computer science. And I hope in the context of this course, that makes you an effective programmer. Fourth, functional languages are elegant. This is by far the most subjective claim I've made, and I can't really back it up with data, so maybe I'm not being a good scientist here. But what I mean by elegant is that functional languages are graceful or dignified or stylish or tasteful or many other synonyms, but the one that holds the most weight to me is beautiful. Have you ever thought of code as being something beautiful? I have. I've seen code that was really ugly, and I've seen code that made me sit back and say, wow, that's a really nice piece of code. Whoever wrote that put a lot of work into making it good. So. Congratulations. Uh, you didn't know it, but in enrolling in 3110, you also enrolled in an art appreciation course. I hope that over the semester, you'll come to appreciate the beauty of OCaml programs. It will be hard, though, at first. 
because they're very unfamiliar. You can't expect to look at unfamiliar syntax in the beginning and, and appreciate it. But I have lost track now of the number of students who have come back to me after completing this course and then going on and coding in another language, maybe in another course here, maybe in industry. They come back and say, yes, these other languages, the programs I'm writing in them now, they look ugly to me. Maybe that will happen for you too. If not, that's okay. You might ask, does any of that really matter? Do aesthetics matter in programming? The answer is yes, they do. Beyond just the subjective part of it. Think about who reads and writes code. Both machines and humans read code. And to the machine, it doesn't matter how beautiful your code is. It's not going to appreciate that. Not yet. Maybe the AI folks are working on that. But elegant code is something that, even if it's not yet important to computers, is important to humans. Elegant code is easier to read and therefore to maintain. One of the things you'll discover over time is that programmers eventually spend less time writing code and more time maintaining code, which is to say, tweaking it, adjusting it, improving it, adding new features. And it's not always gonna be code that you wrote to begin with. So reading other people's code is going to become part of your job, maybe one day. And at that point, you will begin to appreciate when people write ugly code versus beautiful code. Now, elegant code is not necessarily easier to write. In fact, it can take more time to write. It usually does. Frequently, you write the ugly version first, and then you go back and improve it. I, I'm not saying that you will initially be able to write really beautiful code quickly, therefore. It's something that takes work and practice. But it's worthwhile perfecting that ability. So there you have it. Four reasons that, to me, make it quite vital to study functional programming.